Living Health Journal, bringing you the latest information on medicine, psychology, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. Major medical advances are made each week, and each week the American Health Journal keeps you up to date. Hello and welcome to this edition of the American Health Journal. I'm your host, Roger Cooper. Today's program offers the newest information to improve the quality of your life. First up, a special report on a breakthrough in heart disease prevention. We'll speak with a Nobel Prize winning researcher about how to improve your heart health. Then, when disaster strikes, will we be ready? A look at how emergency departments get ready to handle anything that happens. Also, advancements in technology make possible more accurate diagnosis of infants who have a suspected heart deformity. Later, a technologically advanced method for delivering radiation treatment for cancer that targets the tumor with more accuracy. And finally, a discussion of migraine headaches, a real problem for millions of Americans. Now on the American Health Journal. An amazing discovery has proven vital to cardiovascular health. Nitric oxide. Our executive producer, Roland Perez, interviewed the winner of the 1998 Nobel Prize in Medicine on this recent discovery. At the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, I had the opportunity to interview Dr. Louis Ignaro. Dr. Ignaro won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for his research into nitric oxide. And now he's using nitric oxide in exciting new treatments for heart disease that produce instant and dramatic results that may lower blood pressure and even reduce cardiac disease. Nitric oxide was a molecule I wasn't studying until the late 1970s. My colleague who shared the Nobel Prize, Fred Murad, had discovered that nitric oxide could elevate the cellular levels of an important signaling molecule called cyclic GMP. And uh, we became interested in, uh, in how this might uh, occur. Uh, we knew that drugs like nitroglycerin, which had been used since the days of Alfred Nobel 150 years ago to treat hypertension and treat heart pain, uh, we knew the drug worked very well, but the mechanism of action was unknown. So we thought that perhaps the nitro part of nitroglycerin might somehow be converted in the body to nitric oxide. And so we did some key experiments and we showed that nitroglycerin can be metabolized, if you will, to nitric oxide in the smooth muscle of the arteries. And we then showed that nitric oxide was the active principle responsible for the vasodilating action of the nitroglycerin. So this is how we first started to look at NO because we suspected nitroglycerin might work through a nitric oxide mechanism. And what this led to very simply was the recognition that nitric oxide is such a potent vasodilator in the body and we couldn't understand why our body would have receptors to interact with an outside chemical like nitric oxide unless our bodies made nitric oxide but we didn't know about it. So we set out on a five-year project that turned out to be five years to try to find and isolate a nitric oxide-like substance in the body. And that's when we discovered that the arteries, the endothelial cells of the arteries, actually make nitric oxide, the same nitric oxide that's generated from nitroglycerin. Once we, we meaning the scientific community, appreciated the protective effects of nitric oxide in the cardiovascular system, the question asked was, well, how can we stimulate our own nitric oxide production? So many drug companies set off, and they're still uh, working on this, trying to develop prescription drugs for stimulating nitric oxide production. But after understanding the way nitric oxide is produced in the body, uh, we had the idea that uh, we could get by uh, with uh, non-prescription drugs, uh, amino acids, antioxidants, and so on, to stimulate the production of nitric oxide. And what we found was that simple amino acids like arginine and like citrulline, when combined with certain antioxidants like vitamin C and vitamin E, when all of these are taken together, they can markedly boost the production uh, of nitric oxide and also stabilize the nitric oxide, preventing it from being uh, inactivated by those oxygen radicals that I was telling you about. So this is one uh, very simple way to stimulate uh, one's own nitric oxide production. 
But there are other things one can do as well. For example, it's well appreciated in the past few years now that exercise is the body's principal way to increase nitric oxide production. When, the, when you're exercising, you have increased blood flow. Your heart is pumping the blood faster through the arteries. This increase in blood flow through the arteries stimulates nitric oxide production by the 